The journey isn't always easy or following a straight path. Sometimes you hit a crossroad and at other times a brick wall. If you trust in the process and get up every time you get knocked down, you will reach your destination eventually. Hey everybody, it's time for another devlog episode about Go See a Knight's Tale, a side-scrolling puzzle platformer that follows the journey of a dog in medieval armor on his quest home. That's right, I finally figured out a working title for my first game. I don't know if the name will stick or be replaced down the line, but for now, I think it perfectly captures what my game is about. While also dropping it close to home, and close to home is exactly the brick wall that I hit. When you make a video game about a character that is based in part or completely on someone in real life, in my case, Tyrion, our best friend and family member, and then they aren't around anymore, it is really difficult to go back and continue with the project because you're reminded of them all the time and it feels like they're still around when they're not. And at the same time, it is also strangely therapeutic because you're working through that grief. It's an extremely personal story, so I am not going to get much further into it. But all that said, that is the massive brick wall that I hit. Grief. And I'm still trying to get over it and break through it. And it's a process. The game from the start was always intended to honor Tyrion and celebrate who he was in life and how he was in life and share that with everybody. So I thank you all for the continued support and for sticking around during the extremely long downtime since the last update. There have been a lot of things that I didn't touch on in the last devlog episode and the one before that and some updates that happened since then. So let's get back to it. So something I knew right from the start that I wanted in the game was a simple interaction mechanic that would allow the player to interact with things like treasure chests, puzzles, NPCs, potions, and so on. To quickly workshop this feature, I modeled a very simple signpost in Blender and popped that into Unreal to pimp it out with a few things, like a floating arrow that shows up when the player is too far away, and an outline when the player steps into range of an interactable object. Now of course, I needed something to pop up so that the player would know that they interacted with the thing, and as you saw there, text boxes is what I did. So I hopped into Photoshop and created some text boxes, did the whole widget thing, with the buttons and whatnot, and with that I had my very first fully interactable object. And this goes without saying, of course this is all still very early days, and the way this looks and maybe even works can still change. Before moving on to the next chunk, I also made a control volume that would pop up a text box as you walked through it, and then applied that to a very rudimentary NPC. And since we're talking about the NPC, well, there isn't much to say outside of the plane being representative of the character animation sprites down the line. What the f are you looking at? And the arrow helping me in figuring out at what point that sprite would have to flip horizontally in order to look at the player. If there are better ways of doing this, definitely feel free to always let me know in the comments down below because I'm still very new to Unreal Engine and doing any of this. Next, let's talk about the camera in the game. It is literally the bane of my existence and such a fickle thing to get right. And I'm dreading going back to it because I know I will have to. Anyways, in my first level attempt, I had already begun implementing a trigger volume that would change the distance of the camera to Tyrion. While that did the trick, I realized that this system needed a complete overhaul. So I began the process by updating the camera with an asset from the Epic Store. This new camera allowed me to control the horizontal horizontal lag separately from the vertical lag. This is important to me because I don't want the camera to follow the player vertically when they're jumping, unless they get to a cliff, at which point the camera will need to. Beyond this, I also want the camera to precede the player when they're walking forward and not really do the same when they're turning around and walking the other direction. Couple that with an idle timer and then control volumes that still control how far the camera will be away from the player. You can see how like there's a lot of different states that I need to somehow control in order for the camera to work 
properly. Since we're on the topic, I do want to talk about the camera control volume because it's turned into far more than that because I've expanded it to do other functions like opening a new level, turning on and off actor components, basically a bunch of stuff that I can control from inside the level now, which is just so much faster than going back into a blueprint, changing a little value and you know, so on, so on. But that also brings me to my next update. Ever since I saw actor components in a YouTube video, I just couldn't get them out of my mind and I felt it was something that I absolutely needed to include in the game, even if it wasn't necessary at all. That let me down a never-ending rabbit hole of turning almost everything into components. From the wall checking box traces, to my dev tools, to even the sword and shield. There isn't really a reason for that last one, but who knows, I might need it at some point. Moving on to level design, I know that in episode 5 I said that I wouldn't get carried away with the set dressing. Well, I did, but for a good reason. As I've mentioned on previous live streams, my aim is to apply for the Epic Mega Grant, which I did on the 19th of January this year. And in order to do that, I needed the game to look a little bit more presentable. That meant outside of having a complete game loop that takes you from the main menu into the game and once you fall off the bridge back to the main menu, I also wanted to show the direction of the environment design. Just before starting on the set dressing though, I added an extra section that would give me some space to add a very simplistic puzzle. And then as you get into the next section, I added a viewpoint camera that would then give an idea of where the character will need to go and what the obstacle is that lies ahead. And since we're looking at the bridge right now, the bridge also received a pretty big update since the last episode. I spent time replacing the individual bricks with larger chunks, which now get generated along a spline. That basically allows me to make the bridge however long I want to, have it curve whichever way I would like it to. But the tricky thing about the spline that took me a while to get right had to do with the intended collapse of the bridge. I needed to basically generate meshes, which I could then detect attach from the spline and add physics to. I did play around with another spline tool idea to occasionally have Tyrion move along the y-axis. While it mostly works, there are still some bugs which drive me crazy. I'm essentially trying to get this to work with however erratic the player might be moving, but it's been a tough one. Lastly, some other bits and bobs include a new ground shadow for Tyrion, and while I like the real-time shading, I'm considering going a bit more toward 2D shows, which generally have simpler ground shadows. Before I wrap this episode up, I do want to quickly talk about my current focus and what I want to tackle in 2024. To be completely honest, I haven't touched the Unreal Engine file probably since last August, and that's mostly because I was focusing on the Mega Grant application. But with the application sent and this latest episode being done, I'm looking forward to getting back into the engine and working on the game, because for 2024, my goal is to finish a vertical slice of the game. To wrap this video up, I guess I just want to finish with reiterating the importance of this game to myself. This game has always been intended to be about Tyrion, to honor him and to share him with everybody and to make him live on forever. And even though I feel like I might have been naive for thinking that he would still be around when I release this game, you know, him not being here makes me just that much more motivated to actually fully commit and follow through on this. And so I just want you to know that no matter how long it might take for me to upload another devlog episode or release this game, I fully intend to finish this game, to release it, to allow everybody to experience what Tyrion was like, to build a companionship with him and guide him through his journey. But I also intend to document that process and share it with everybody. Just keep that in mind if it has been a while since the last episode. So, I thank you all for sticking around. I thank you for the continued support. And I want to give a shout out to Tristan, Captain Poopy Bum, and Whimsical Wisp over on Patreon for spending your hard-earned money on supporting me. Thank you so, so much. And with that... 
I wish you all a wonderful day, night, morning, wherever you are, and I will see you all in the next video.